Hey everyone, um, I just wanted to make a video to show everybody how to do these motif studies in Photoshop. I am so glad that we can use Photoshop to develop these. If you're trying to do it by hand, you will probably end up killing someone. Um, so here's how to do it in Photoshop, really, really easy. I went to File to create a new um, kind of workspace. Um, these are two by four inches um, because we're doing the root four armature thing. So I'm just going to create like um, a page essentially to, to lay my things down that's eight inches by 16 inches and I'm just making it in um, 72 pixels per inch because I'm going to be uploading it to the web to show you guys. So um, that's what I would recommend you do. It doesn't need to be bigger than that. It doesn't need to be 200 or 300 DPI because you're not going to be printing it. Um, when you're scanning, make your DPI higher so that the quality is better. But when you're making stuff to upload to the web, just put it at 72. You can't see higher than that. Okay, so um, I'm actually going to rotate this. I should have done it the other way. So here's my background. It's just a plain uh, white background. Um, we're going to be working with layers. If you don't know about layers, learn it. Go to lynda.com or go to adobe.com and, and learn about what a layer is in Photoshop. Um, layers are your best friend for this exercise. In order to put your first um, file down that you're going to be copying and twisting and turning and rotating and flipping vertically and horizontally, you're going to go to File and you're going to go to Place. And you're going to watch me navigate to my motif without the armature on it and there it is okay I'm doing an octopus shape so I'm just gonna show you how to do one pattern but I'm gonna use some of the different tools in Photoshop and you can use these to your heart's content so place your file by clicking the check mark when you have it in position you'll see that I get a black line down the side of mine um, I think that that happened from scanning, so when I submit my final studies, I'm actually going to recrop this image um, and then go through these steps so that it's not there, but I think in this case it makes it easier to kind of see what I'm doing with the different layers, so I'm going to leave it. So you'll see that I've got my background layer, which is locked, and then I've got my motif file, which is a new layer. Okay, so if I click this little eyeball, it takes shows me the layer or it hides the layer. So if you push Command J or Control, I think Control J on a PC, it's going to duplicate the layer. It's going to duplicate it in the same spot, so you're not going to see it, even though it shows up in the Layers palette. You won't see it until you click and drag it into a different spot. So I could um, just click and drag like this, and then you know continue to do that Command J or Control J to create. A bunch of layers that I just move one to the side to the side to the side. But I know you'll agree with me that this makes for a pretty sucky pattern, so I want to try something else. I want to try to flip this layer um, horizontally so that it actually makes a full octopus shape. In order to do that, I have to push Command T or Control T on a PC, which is actually the transform um, function in Photoshop. When I do that, you'll notice that a bounding box comes. I'm able to resize it if I want to, um, which I actually showed in one of my earlier videos. Um, I'm just going to lock that and put it at 100% since that's where I want it. What we're going to do in transform feature this time is right click and do any number of things. Okay, We can scale, rotate, skew, but we're going to disregard all these features and we're going to look at flip horizontal and flip vertical, which is going to do exactly like what it sounds like. When I click flip horizontal, look what happens. The whole thing flips. Bravo. There's my octopus. Now, you'll notice that the bounding box is still around this layer. I can still change the size if I want to, but I don't. I want to leave it at 100% because remember how important it is that each of the um, each of your motif studies is at the exact same size. And then Professor B talked about that. Obviously, your pattern won't, won't look any good if one layer is 
100% and then the next one's a little bit larger and the next one's a little bit smaller. That doesn't work. So leave this proportion at just 100% of the original file size and click the check mark. Now, you could theoretically push Command J to just duplicate that layer, which you can also do by going to layer and clicking duplicate layer. Uh, the key commands are faster, which is why I'm trying to teach you those. Obviously, you don't want to do that because it will take you forever. So instead, because I want for this example to put a bunch of octopuses, this octopus shape that I've gotten with two layers next to it, next to, so sort of this one here, right here, I'm going to select both of my layers by just holding down the shift key and clicking so that both of the layers are selected. And I'm going to push Command J or Control J if you're on a PC. What that does is it actually creates duplicates of both of these layers. You'll notice that the duplicates are here now where there were two, two layers. Now there are four plus my background layer. And once again you'll see it doesn't look like they're there because they're right on top of the original file. So if you just click and drag, there's another octopus. Okay? So I'm just going to kind of click and drag that into position where I want it. Rad. Now I could push Command J again to get this octopus to copy, just like I copied this octopus. But I want this whole combination here to show up right here. So what I'm going to do is push Shift, click the top and the bottom layers to select all of them. You can also push command and click on each one, but holding the shift key is faster. I'm not sure if that works on a PC, but I think I think it does. Then you're going to push command J again when all of these layers are selected. Okay? I'm just going to hide that. It's still they're still selected. So, command J, look what happens. Now I've got a bunch of layers. If I stretch this out, you'd see that each one of them's got a different name here. Um, so I'm just going to hide this. Once again, it copied the layers right in place, but if I click and drag, look at how fast that was, guys. If you were doing this by hand, I, I, I bless your heart, okay? Go for it, but I think you're crazy, and do it in Photoshop. It will be so much easier. Um, play with this in Photoshop. Don't do this by hand, okay? I just cannot stress that enough. I can't imagine that they want anyone to do this, in Photoshop, not in Photoshop. So, okay, I've got my top layer here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight copies of my motif in different um, vertical and horizontal positionings. Now, what I want to do, just as an example, is I want to take one, two, three, and four octopus. I want, instead of just copying this entire shape right here and just bringing it down, which I could do by selecting all these layers and pushing Command J, making another set of them, and then just dragging them down. I actually want to flip this now instead of flipping it horizontally, which would which would really make it look kind of the same as it looks now. Let me show you. So I push Command T to get that transform. If I flipped it horizontally, you, you can't even really see a difference, okay? But watch what happens if I flip it vertically. Whoa, okay? It flips this entire thing vertically. So now I can just position it where I want. Uh, this is a little bit wonky, but you, I hope you're getting the general idea, right? So when I when I have it where I want, because I'm in control uh, T or transform, which I think you get to... Where is transform? Uh, I'll find it and show you in the next video. Um, so... We're in, we're in the transform, right? This is the one where we can scale this box if we want. But this time, the only thing we're looking to do is to flip vertically and flip horizontally. So let's get that back to 100% of our file size. Remember, we want to keep that original file size. Notice that when I'm in, um, by changing it back to 100, I've actually reoriented it so that it's not vertical. Or, or I'm sorry, so that it, it hasn't had that vertical flip. So I'm actually going to make that negative 100. So that it flips upside down. Um, don't worry about the numbers. Just push Command T when you've got the layers that you want to flip selected, and then right click once you have the bounding box. When you right click, that menu will come up and you can do whatever you want. So 
rock on. When you have them in position where you want them, push the check mark. Now, I want to show you one last thing. Hopefully this video has made sense, but if it hasn't, you just ask me questions and I'll make some more until it's clear to everyone. Because I cannot stress this enough. Do this in Photoshop. If you want to take an element and rotate it 90 degrees, which doesn't work for my particular motif, but a lot of you, um, I can't remember who did the like amazing pea pod, but I think that there could be some sort of interesting cross shapes if you merged your motif in both um, horizontal and vertical and 90 degree rotation flips. There's a way to do that in Photoshop and it's really easy as well. So I'm actually, um, I'm actually going to just do this in a new file just to kind of show you how it's done. So I'm going to replace my motif. That's going to show up in a bounding box. This is already showing up in, in Command T for you guys, okay? It's got a bounding box when you're placing it. You can change the proportions. You could flip it if you wanted to by just right clicking. But I'm just going to go ahead and place it the way that it is. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit so we can see better what we're doing. So I've got that layer positioned. If I wanted to rotate this 90 degrees, I have to get back with the bounding box by pushing Command T, Control T. I right click and I do rotate 90 degrees. This is to go clockwise. This is to go counterclockwise. If you wanted to do vertical, you could either hit flip vertical or rotate 180 degrees, which is, I think, basically going to do the same thing. So, in this case, I just want to rotate it clockwise. Okay? 90 degree rotation. I'm going to position it where I want, and I'm going to click the checkbox. I'm going to push Command J to make a new layer. I'm going to move this down and put it in position. Command J again if I want to maybe move this here. Now obviously what the way in which you use these tools will vary widely depending on what your design is. I drew this octopus so that it would create a face when I did a horizontal flipping of my motif. It turns out to be really boring. I'm gonna have to hit the drawing board again because it's just there's just too much negative space. But use these different tools in Photoshop in a way, you know, t to make your design just to kind of like experiment, right? So the 90 degree rotation and just copying all of these, like, this is boring. But that doesn't mean that for your design it will be boring. I feel like maybe it's Andrew who's doing the line that's like so beautiful. It's like face, it's really intricate, it's got these cool little points to it. That could be amazing. Flipped upside down and, you know, the face is already there. It doesn't require the mirror image to, to, kind of like create the face. So you've got like so much room to play there with twisting your file. So anyway, I highly recommend that you do that. Remember that you just do Command T to get into that transform and you right click and you've got all of these different things that you can play with. So if I want to flip this horizontally, like that's kind of interesting, you know, this one, you can just see what it's doing. So if I, you know, if I select two and I push Command J and I copy both of these, you know, maybe I... I don't know, maybe I'd bring them down here. You know, this is where the experimentation can happen. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna force you guys to watch me experiment on here any more than this, but play around with it. Select the layers that you want. Um, if you want to select more than one layer, either push shift at the top and the bottom of the layers to select all of them, or hit command to pick random layers. Um, I'm not sure if those heat that I'm working on a Mac so I'm not sure that you can do that on a PC but I think that you can somebody let us know if you're on a PC check it out and let us know um, but pick the layers that you want command J is going to duplicate command T is going to transform right clicking is going to let you flip vertically horizontally or rotate your motif check it out let us see what you're doing I hope this was helpful let me know.